Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, February the 18th order. Time is now 9 a.m. First item on the agenda is, as always, the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the meetings are always uh, audio and video recorded. Uh, we ask that everyone, uh, myself included, I should probably do that, silence their phones just to make sure we don't interrupt the flow of the meeting. Uh, there is masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room for anybody interested. Uh, at this time, I'll make a, an op I'll actually open up the floor to public comment for anybody that is interested in doing so. Um, the microphone, when you step up to it, please make sure that it's on. I don't know if that one got turned on. Sue, it, it did? Okay. Um, please be sure to speak clearly into the microphone, your name and address, as well as signing it on the sheet then. Yep, okay. Seeing no public comments, we'll move into the main items for the agenda. Um, no, there's no one on Zoom yet. I'll let you know if somebody joins. I have it up on the, the laptop here. Um, we will need to amend the agenda. So let's get that out of the way first and foremost. Um, <clears throat> there was a slight change to the crane quote. So keep me honest, it was a difference of about $700 because they, they recommended using the bigger crane based on their site review. So I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include the crane for the culvert projects on there. Second. Roll call. Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion then to authorize the increase of the $700 on the Dickinson crane quote. Ooh, yeah, that's okay. So we, we already have a motion to amend the agenda. So I'm going to make a motion to authorize the increase of $700 on the original Dickinson grain quote. Sure. Jim has a second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, the other item that I want to amend onto the agenda is I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to include ordering some additional signage. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. And then I'd like to make a motion to order two uh, type three wood barricades. I have them up on the, the laptop, Jim, Jim and Irene. Uh, it was the recommend, recommendation of Ryan and Butch to get these in addition to the other road close signs to help make sure that nobody drives or tries to drive through once we start doing construction. Um, they're about $120, $130 a piece. Um, I have to get a, a full quote from MSI, but I'd like to just get them. We'll have plenty of use for them throughout the oh, course yeah. of this year and I'm sure beyond, um, as well as two triangular yellow attention signs that we can put out by the, the triangle there on 422. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's, that's discussion. We're not motioning yet. Um, yeah. So if you guys are on board with it, I'll, I'll make a motion to order two type three wood barricades and two uh, yellow attention signs from MSI. Can I do roll call now? Yes, you can. <laughs> Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. If, yes. That's, that's like petty cash stuff. Yeah, I would, I, I would say you have, you have that within your discretion as a road super, a road master to, to do that. Thank, thank you for bringing it up, but it's it's minimal. It's de minimis in, in nature. I mean, 
but right. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. it's it would be like if you just went and bought like grease for the truck or oil for the truck or something like that. If you really want to be square on it, I'll make a motion to authorize yeah. Butch to. Yeah, I mean, well, let's just do it. We'll we'll make it proper. I'll make a motion to authorize Butch to purchase the needed. Okay, so I'll make a motion to amend the agenda uh, to include uh, Butch purchasing sandbags. Call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Now, uh, I will make the motion to authorize Butch to purchase the needed sandbags for the Colbert projects. Second. <laughs> Roll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Before we move into the main items for the agenda, do either of you have any amendments that we need to make? Okay. Excellent. So the first actual agenda item is the Act 537. As we've mentioned in previous months, the Northwest and East Districts are, you know, up for inspection. The East District is up for inspection 2023 and 2024. Uh, Hydroterra has completed an existing dwelling unit evaluation for proposed sewer service and submitted a sewer design comparison. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to Joe a little bit ago, and he was suggesting that uh, we get started with perhaps some some soil analysis to make sure that um, we're dealing with really close to the surface bedrock or anything like that that would further ratchet up the costs of a gravity-fed sewer. I think that's a prudent thing that we can do kind of in the in the waiting period for anything else like the LSA grant. So um, I would say rather than amend the agenda yet again, let's put it on the agenda for Thursday night. Uh, to authorize them to start doing that because there will be a cost associated with that. Um, yeah, absolutely, please. Okay. 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 I can serve her. Well, I really love to hear from the three, four of you. But, you know, uh, if there's any feeling that maybe we ought to shift, like, shift methodologies and consider, you know, something different than what's been approved by 537. If there is, I think that we should meet in a uh, committee process. <laughs> understand some of those concerns and, and so that you all can understand some of my cautions uh, if we change direction at this point. Okay. So I, I think that might be not a bad idea to set up like a, a special meeting. That way we're not tying up the entirety of a regular Thursday night meeting. But uh, at its at its core, you guys got a chance to read over the, the whole thing that they had sent over? I, mean, I have to confess, I have to rely on your expertise. Yeah. yeah. You know, Just, yeah. Purely from a yeah. dollars and cents standpoint, I understand a lot. If the meat if, yeah. Any, yeah. Who do you guys spend money on? Yeah. You know, yeah. These preliminary work. Uh, we would want to. I had talked to Andy George about this earlier. Uh, it might make sense to get in front of BEP and say, you know, we're considering this. What's the possibility? Um, and then there's, you know, there's other things that go along the way. So different methodology requires mechanical. So but it, it's it's an eventuality. Yeah. Moving parts fail eventually. But so, so just to clarify, yeah. I mean, me for about two weeks now. Uh, DEP accepted our new proposed timeline and schedule, but not necessarily new plan. Correct. Oh, so we haven't okay. actually submitted any sort yeah. of new plan. We revised the timeline, okay. and we're actually it's one of the things that I've made notes on. We're actually probably going to have to ask them to amend it a little bit further. Right. since that LSA grant got pushed out two quarters. Right. Um, I think it would be prudent for us to talk 
to Hydra Terra, go over everything in, in immense detail. Because I understand like yes. the difference between a, a gravity sewer and a, a forced uh, pressure sewer is you don't have any influx and infiltration on uh, a pump sewer, like a, a pressurized system. However, it's less scalable. You don't have the ability to add additional capacity on later. Mm -hmm. Whereas your traditional one is a lot more scalable. It has less maintenance. It has no pumps in it other than the lifter to get it into the Wolmelsdorf sewer plant. But it's substantially more expensive because of the excavation and just some of the other pipes and parts and things. So we have to, we have to weigh the options here of, it's a pretty staggering amount. It's like, I think close to four or $5 million yeah. in difference from what, what was provided. Um, so. I, I, I guess it's that whole concept of what will this town look like? What will this township look like in 30, 40 years from now? and trying to anticipate if there will be future development, et cetera. Well, be, being yeah. honest, based on based on our zoning, yeah. we probably won't see a lot of development other than potentially along 422 where it's right. zoned highway commercial because most of the other properties are either low density right. residential or ag or uh, ag preserve or ag secured. So there's really, we, we've locked in a lot of things. It's just that strip right along 422 and a little bit along like the one section of 419. So again, not a like wastewater right. engineer here, but I would think if we have that pumping station, you could actually not add the main leg on, but you could bring other things into that same pumping station. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not like right. we're completely pigeonholing ourselves, okay. but it would change the dynamic if we had like a whole bunch of apartments or something go in on, on Main Street. Not saying that that's going to happen or anything, anybody, but um, that would change the dynamic of how much capacity could be moved through that system. I, I think it's hard to foresight because people didn't think that way and we're mm -hmm. into this problem at now. So I want to do the best that we can with your advice and guidance over how we can avoid future problems and, and make good decisions now and set things up so that the future is, is better. Yeah, like with everything yeah. else, we want to address the need, yeah. obviously, but we want to make sure that we're not sticking ourselves with a problem 10 years yeah. down the ro yeah. road, 15 years down right. the road, whatever. Because that's what's happening. Obviously, we've been stuck with a planning that no one else wants to deal with, and I want to make sure we're getting... I think, and I definitely feel we're getting excellent advice from you guys, and, and we appreciate yeah. your input tremendously. We, we do appreciate um, it. Yeah. So I think that the takeaway on this is let's maybe figure out a time some night that isn't a supervisor meeting or like a planning commission meeting or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, so, so it could be like a special meeting. It could be more of like an informal give and take kind of like, can you explain this, do this? Like, is that- It can, it can be that? anything that we want. Okay. We just have to open it and close it like a regular meeting gotcha. and adhere to the like sunline shaws. And yeah, and there has to be minutes. So we have, we have to keep some structure to it, but it can be very much an open forum of discussion. Well, we could, yeah. So, yeah. So I would say, let's find a good date for a special meeting and we'll have, have it some night. You guys show up with material and let's have a, a kind of an open tabletop discussion of, okay, what about this or what about this or what about this? Okay, which, uh, because of the cost, do we have to amend the agenda again for advertising? Okay. So let's, let's do it. Let's do it Thursday. Let's do it Thursday, but put that on the agenda for Thursday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know, I, I, I know, I know. Um, so let's put that on for that, but that's, let's make that our plan that we will get connected. We'll figure out a good date to get together and discuss. Um, and then I think the next step based on that would be, we try to set up a meeting with DEP, whether they come here, we go to Harrisburg, doesn't. Yeah. So, I mean, if, even if we. Uh, well, we would serve. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so i would say that would be the next step is let's try and coordinate some some meeting whether it's through zoom or teams or skype or whatever they want to do or in person it's not that long of a drive to harrisburg 
and we'll go and, and discuss this with them and let them know kind of the situation we're in and try okay. and try and find the solution. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, well, let's, 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 um, let's use the goodwill that you guys have with DEP. Let's leverage the, the relationship yeah. there. Easy. I think that's a great way to move forward. It really works, but that kind of special. Okay. Okay. I guess yeah. I'd just like to have so that you could educate me more a little bit about the difference in the systems. And, you know, again, I don't do engineering, I don't do what you guys do. And, you know, other than reading what, what you're telling me, I, I guess I'd like the opportunity just to have a little bit more open discussion about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that might be helpful um, in terms of looking at this from like a, a 20 year per household breakdown would be the cost of a pump if we were going to go to the low pressure system and what their expected useful life is. Like, are we expecting to pump every five years, pump every 10 years? <laughs> Over 20 years, are you replacing a $400 pump four times or are you replacing an $800 pump twice? Um, that'll help weigh the difference between if it's truly almost 50% more to do a, a gravity system, does it actually still make sense to do that because it's lower, a lower upfront cost for people or is it actually more expensive when you look at it as a, a, a long-term investment? Because um, that's, that's what I would want to see is what the actual... It's it, we have a huge price tag no matter which one we do. So which which one when we look at it per person is actually going to be the, the least impactful? Yeah. 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 The, I'm I'm looking essentially total cost of ownership for that. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, and so you can't beat gravity, but if, if it's the difference between six million dollars and a little over ten million dollars, that might that yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And there's gonna be more problems, I don't want to say problems necessarily more maintenance yeah. than what well, is the true and that's, cost over the life of that that's what we have to look at what the difference in the yeah. cost is. So if we're saying this is let's say I'm, I'm just gonna make up numbers here. This is entirely fictitious, but if it's um a twenty year cost of ten thousand dollars for a homeowner on a low pressure or a ten year or a twenty year cost of twenty thousand dollars, that ten thousand dollar difference might be worth a little frustration every decade on replacing right. a pump. So Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's actually, that's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cause you know, people are going to flush like, Baby wipes and yeah, sink. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, yeah. So let's and let's I, plan. I don't want I don't want a board of supervisors in twenty years to look back at like we look at it sometimes and go, why didn't they do this? Yeah, right the first time. Yeah, uh, I don't want that to happen. And that's why I keep bringing up what. Yeah, and some of this, okay. some of this is always like every every Act Five Thirty Seven has a component of it that's education that we're mm -hmm. supposed to teach well, more or less people. Line on. We can't afford six million, and we, we can't, can't afford, afford ten. 10 yeah, so. but the likelihood of us getting a substantial amount of grants for six million is demonstrably better than ten million when you look at it. Well, just, yeah, but we can go back to back to them and say, you know, hey, we only got six; we need ten. Yeah. Get any ideas where we can get four more million? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I keep bringing up water is I don't want in 20 years for them to say, why did they put in the sewage and not put in water? Because we can't develop Main Street, you've mentioned before, without sewage and water. 
So if, if not, anybody ever wanted to do but, anything on Main well, Street. Well, that's, that's not wholly true, though, because the way the zoning is, as long as you have sewer, you can still have a well and have it work for a lot of things. You can't see... Um, you can't put a yeah, I was going to say, you wouldn't be able to put, like, medium-density residential along the highway commercial bit because it, it, it would support it from a zoning standpoint, but the... I shouldn't say that the district it's zoned in would support it. However, the requirements in the zoning would not support it. So you couldn't do that because you don't have enough uh, space there per what is the combination of well and, and on lots or not on lots, or it's the municipal sewer. If we had water, you could do that. So it, it would open some doors, but it doesn't preclude development. You could put businesses in there, uh, most businesses, things that aren't going to be, you know, flushing a ton of water would probably still be okay um, or have a ton of people packed into a small space. But saying that we can't develop Main Street because of not having water is is a, a little bit of a, a fallacy. Um, no, but I... Because that's... We opened... I like it, but I could see at some point maybe somebody wanting to put a, a business on Main well, Street. You, but you could. You could. Yeah, so we we open, and this is among the many reasons that I'm not a big fan of water, and I saw Kelly's hand go up. Give me just a second, Kelly. Um, is we open Pandora's box. The way zoning is, you you open the doors for a lot bigger, heavier concentrations of, of population-related items, like apartments and things like that. Um, whereas if we're still on wells, and even if we have the public sewer, it encourages more of a, a small town style of business. It's more picture more like what Lidditz has, that sort of thing, rather than something that's more like downtown Reading. So, uh, Kelly. Mm-hmm. From what the engineer has told us in the past, no, because we're so low on the water table because of being near to the Tulpahocken, we don't really have a lot of concern about that. And again, I'm not a hydrogeologist or anything like that, but like Kim and Kim and Joe, keep me honest. We have, but we've got. I don't know. Really wouldn't be that much of a concern. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's flowing down the channel. It's finding spots to go out and, and go down. Yeah. And, and again, it's a, it's a great question. It's a very valid concern. But my understanding from reading through the plan and some of the other preliminary surveys and things that are in there was we actually have intersections of a number of different groupers <laughs> in the area. So even if there was a problem with one where we had upstream problems with the Tulpa Hawk and it had been really low, we still have a number of other water, subsurface water sources moving through the area. So you might have a couple of people that have some issues with wells, but we wouldn't see mass, uh, like everybody on Main Street's well runs dry or anything like that. So, yep. How far away from the sewer line? Per Per, if you're putting a new one in, it's supposed to be 100 feet. Or no, excuse me, from a septic tank. So a well to a septic tank is 100 feet. I don't think there is a isolation. Yeah. A, a, a well. Yeah. A, a well separated from a public sewer line. No, I'm talking about if we were to put in water, how oh, far I, does it have to be away from the same line? If you're it's dig like, a hole. It's like feet. You're going to dig anything. a trench. Yeah, it's... So you'd have yeah. to, Brian, you'd have to, that's where I was going to go next. You'd have to dig two it's trenches. Yeah. You'd say have to dig that, a lot wider or separate trench. Sep, sep, separate yeah, trench, but with, with water, you don't have to dig. Sense. You don't have to dig anywhere. I as just wondered if you could go fill the same trench. No. If you're doing the same thing with water, well, I may pay one time instead of 
Yeah. Uh, but to Peter's point, I mean, I've read through the zoning, putting public water in allows a lot of properties on Main Street to go to four, five, six apartments. And that is considerable on the wastewater load because we go with a low pressure grinder pump. We size that based on one EDU, right? So now we have four EDUs that are going in there. Well, now the tank needs to be bigger. You're kind of, yeah. it's a little different scenario. Yeah, it, it, it moves things around, and I think in a direction that we don't necessarily want for a number of reasons. One, it would, it would drastically change the character of Stouchburg if we allowed that. And two, it would drastically change some of the underlying infrastructure that we have for like we, when we put the public sewer in. So it's, it's a good thought. I had the same thought, honestly, about the gas connection because there's like there's a gas connection of Main Street, but there's not a gas connection on some of the areas like Canal Road and things like that. That invites other things because there's more excavation and then you have to pay people to hook up. And it's, it, it may or may not be worth actually going down. Um, but again, we can, we can talk about that closer to time because water is a much, much, much smaller project than the wastewater system. Just have one question. Yeah. And just because uh, Joe just mentioned it, is repaving the sheet part of this or no? Because we have to dig it up. I believe that is part of the project. Um, I'm almost 100%. It's, it's not in the engineering cost? Okay. Okay. So that's that's going to add a substantial amount yeah. to it, too. It needs to, it needs to, it needs to the yeah the other thing to consider is when we dig up main street if we're digging up and repaving anything that's going to trigger ada requirements which means we're going to have to put in the like the curbs yep. or the wheelchair ramps and the curbs and things like that so we're taking some more stuff yep out. we're going to have to we're going to have to build that into the total cost of ownership for this yep. so yes You, yeah i was gonna say we don't have to yeah let's say there's a lot less excavation because like ryan keep me honest this my understanding is that we would have a big hole that we cut in one section and we essentially auger straight out in either direction Yeah, rather than digging a big, long, open trench. So, I mean, there's there's a lot to consider, which is why I think going back full circle to the original point is we need to have a separate meeting where we just it's go through this plan. in painful detail from yeah. start to finish. So. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else that you guys want to add? Uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to hit on maybe uh, the intermunicipal agreement. I understand that it is at, at the sewer quality mm -hmm. review. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with Andy George and uh, Tom on that. Uh, any movement on the first one at this point? Not that we've heard. So if I can just uh, share some thoughts with you all mm -hmm. on that development, uh, I spoke with the developer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so after the December meeting, I spoke with the developer and he's like, hey, everyone, I'm going to take all our sewer through Marion Township and make the connection, which sounds great. Mm -hmm. uh, problem being is you cannot, as a township, ex accept sewer from another township. You have to become a municipal authority then to move sewer. So I spoke with Andy George mm -hmm. about this, and uh, I think we shared that with the development, just so you guys understand. They would almost have to run separate line into the homeless or sewer authority for well, half is in Heidelberg, half yeah. is in Marion, and then it butts up.
Burrow. Yes. So you have to get to the authority. They can't bring Heidelberg Township wastewater into Marion Township and have Marion carry it to Wolmersdorf because you are a township and not an authority. Okay, so I know there are five, four or five properties in Marion Township that are along High Street. So it's Sixth Street, High Street. There's a house right here in the corner that is in the borough. The next four or five homes are in Marion Township. They're hooked up to Wolves or so. And, yes, and then this lot has, um, there's a lot along William Penn Boulevard that is part of that parcel that Hearst just bought. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that would be like the tail end of that part of Wolves or so. But 6th Street yeah. is on Wolves or so. Because my in-laws lived in the last house on 6th Street. <laughs> okay. So, um, so that, that could be possible through an international agreement. I don't know. I think that's well, expensive. Uh, yeah. well, would, would we be able to do similar for them with an uh, intermunicipal we agreement? We would have to talk to you. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to get a municipal permit. Legally send the Marion Township sewage to the school store. As soon as you allow the neighbor in, and then all of a sudden. So, Linda, can you make a note? to follow up for Thursday night with the solicitor about if we could accomplish that with an intermunicipal agreement or if there's any other mechanism that would, would accommodate that. Because I don't want to have to set up a municipal authority for that. Um, but I also don't want to see them have to, to do something stupid with piping wastewater in a different direction when it's literally right there. So let's, let's see what our options are. Asking and and he and I were going back and forth on the phone because I said we don't have a public sewer, we can't give you that those EDUs because we don't have public sewer. Was my thinking, but he just wanted to make sure we had forty five units in our capacity. So I think the thought would be that uh, if first comes to the table with the development that the municipal intermunicipal agreement would be started. And that's when you said that instead of making a separate intermunicipal grant just for their needs, we put it, tried it in. Our yeah. Yeah. We, we had talked about it. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be okay. We didn't want to fog down the progress. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll just we'll, first and, you know, commit. we'll have so to talk to Andy and Colin. Well, we would like to see what the concept is. Okay. Encourage you if you get to the point where a planning module is so you can have an engineer look at it. Well, so our, you know, our process is they would have to give us an application and a fee, a sketch form. That goes that gets reviewed by planning commission, which finds its own. Um, and that, you know, I'm sure there's going to be many meetings for that development. And, and then when it's when a planning commission is okay with everything, then it goes to the board for a final approval. I mean, our planning commission doesn't make decisions; they make recommendations to the board. Yeah, so that's how we work. Yeah, uh, but, but the blue share sketch plan would be that would be okay. great for us to just have that okay. understanding. And our engineer is always our planning commission. Okay. So they'll just to, you know, they'll have to submit a sewage sewage planning module, which is an update to your five thirty seven. Okay, and that has wow. its own requirements. Okay, okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole yeah. other concept. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. So if you understand that Act five thirty seven is the 
vehicle that allows planning their current suit. And then you guys did an update, right? Mm -hmm. So once that update was adopted and approved by DEP, that's your Act 537 plan until somebody takes a property and breaks it into three and there is a small sewage facility planning module component that's issued. Right, so now that sewage facility planning module becomes part of the Act 537 broad term, okay, not update. So your update's good until a planning module comes in for development. Now all of a sudden, your 537 plan includes that, it's, a, it's rolled up into the Act 537. So first comes in and he has 40 units, I don't know what number, but 40 units he wants to connect he will have to go through the sewage planning process, which is under Act 537. Once that's adopted, your Act 537 is no longer just the update that McCarthy did, it's the update plus any components that you've received. So when somebody says, where's your Act 537 plan? You really can't just hand them that book anymore. You have to hand them that book and then hand them the sewage facility planning model. It all rolls up into one item. <laughs> yeah. If there's any questions, you can yeah. certainly call me. Yeah. That's that's the simplicity of government in action. They they would they would be ultimately sending their waste to Wilmore Store, yeah. but they would be updating our our Act Five Thirty Seven. Dyson <laughs> and once you get it, 10 days, you have to make sure that it's complete. The word way to help you with that is just a quick completeness <laughs> check. But <laughs> The developer can get deemed approval if there's no action in 10 days. So my question to you is, business to, business days. Business days. if you get a planning module, sure. uh, call us up. Yeah. We'll make sure that, that we get that, that correct documents out. I'm not saying that first is but they do allow them to, to obtain a deemed approval, which has backfired in the state yeah. over the years. Okay. Now, I don't know what's at this point, but the yeah, other yeah. thing is, they still, if they were to charge forward with a, a deemed planning module approval, they still have to deal with the planning commission and the township on a million other items. So most developers don't even consider something like that. Right? They know that they have this relationship. But still, you know, there's a that ten day figure, the, the ten day time period. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody, at, somebody at the state level. Not my rule. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> you yeah, okay. Well, I think we've we've covered a bunch for now. I think we've got a lot for the next time we talk. But it's always great seeing you guys. Thank you for coming out this morning and being at the meeting. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is going to be tremendously less discussion. It's the Stonecroft Village Deed for Open Space Lot 215. Uh, we got a letter from our engineer identifying that open space number eight uh, should have been dedicated to us because it appears to be in the right of way along William Penn Boulevard. Um, so Colin is going to be looking into that and getting a response for us, it should be a simple matter of correction if if it is in fact that way. Have a good Thank have you. a good weekend. Um, they would just have to record a corrective deed of dedication of open space to the HOA and then prepare and provide a deed of dedication for the right of way to the town. So they're going to be or Colin specifically is going to be looking into that and letting us know. Okay, next uh, is the emergency management coordinator report. Okay, uh, so when we get the the cost breakdown for those pump kits, we'll we'll go yeah. through that. Um, I'd love to get them in place. So if John can give us a, like, this box is going to cost X number of dollars, yeah. this box yeah. is going to cost this, then, yeah. Yeah, it will be more specific. 
uh, this is what it's going to cost. Yeah. You know, Jim had uh, uh, asked me about the pumps. He sent me a message about it. Yeah. The reason why he wants to buy them locally is if there's a problem and there's a warranty that could get it serviced, they're familiar with the product. And he's dealt with tools for 20 plus years and you have a good relationship with the local dealership. If something's busted and they know that this is like an emergency type of thing, they're going to be more likely to replace and get them a working unit faster than anything else. So, especially with the nature of what, what we need it mm -hmm. for. So, I think Makes that's sense. his preference for dealing with the local. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next is the CWP LD 37 Main Street self storage units. Uh, we are still waiting for the property owner to sign the improvements agreement. No, they can we get it? Ah, okay, good. So we actually, I take that back. We got that. Okay. And that needs to go to planning, correct? Okay. Um, I can put it on for Thursday. Um, you need to, I'd like to put it on for Thursday so Andy or Colin can explain to you. Okay. You need to motion to approve those, the improvements and the stormwater agreements. Okay. And sign them. Okay. And then everybody needs to sign those and the plans. Okay. 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 So we'll do that Thursday night. We'll do that Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Next is the Creekview Dairy Operation at 952 Route 419. We are still waiting for the property owners to amend their NPDES permit and or revise the plans to address the situation by providing a corrective action plan. Uh, this could indicate a alternative means for treatment that would require additional site construction or justify what was constructed. Um, so we get that. There's really not much we can do other than just kind of keep an eye on it. Okay, next item is the Colbert projects. Uh, Monarch has revised the schedule to reflect Reichert Road, uh, Marion Drive North being second and Sheridan Road and then Marion Drive South in that order. Uh, a motion needs to be made to authorize the change. Um, okay, I'll make a motion to authorize the change in Colbert manufacturing order. Second. From roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Aye. When you're done, because I just have a good question. Sure. Um, the construction we're hoping to start on the 27th, isn't it? Um, which means we need to do the pre-construction meeting with BCCD, which is scheduled for February the 22nd at 8 a.m. Our road crew, the engineer, and Jason Rickards from BCCD are going to be in attendance. And our engineer is working on the dirt and low volume gravel road grant submission for Marion Drive South by Jacob Weiss. Um, at this point, do we have, other than like the signs that we just talked about this morning, do we have everything kind of lined up that we're going to need for? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, a little stuff like the rebar and stuff, just butch, just go get it and give us the receipts then and we'll approve it at the next meeting. Okay, good, 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 good. And is that, is the pre-construction meeting gonna be here or is it gonna be out on the site? Oh, it's site, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, and you had a question? Yeah, 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 like that, like a housekeeping thing. So am I paying this out of liquid fuels or general costs? Um, well, we have the three bids for everything. So we technically could use liquid fuels. Okay. Um, what I would say is we're, we're not obligated to pay the entirety of the project out of one or the other. So I would say, let's do the Monarch, the culverts out of liquid fuels, because we have three competitive quotes. Uh, but wait, 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 yeah, the crane rental, we have the, the multiple competitive quotes. So I do the crane rental, but then everything else like Ryan, the rental of Ryan's, uh, equipment, 
and obviously like the road crew related wages and things like that would come out of uh, their respective funds. So that would be general. Yeah. Funds. Okay. Because again, like discovering more of the features, yeah. uh, I just mentioned to Sue, this document that you signed, I can attach that now to bills, which yeah. is, which is it, it's kind of like a redundancy because we have a physical thing, uh, but cards, anything like that, we can actually oh, no, it's the re redundancy yeah. usually has a, a bad taste in most people's mouths, right. but it's, it's a, it's a right. good thing when it comes to data storage. That right. way you don't lose something if something dies. And then just as a side, um, you still have the yep. Yeah, um, I, I still want to hold them, especially in the concept of talking about a new building. Well, yeah. So we have to we have to dedicate it before twenty twenty four. We have to look back. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I'm a little foggy on that. Yes. Yeah. So, but I think us saying we can use it for anything, right. I think we still have to use it for right. 2025. But we have okay. to check on that. Right. From so, a housekeeping and an auditing perspective, it's so much easier for me to say we've used it for this. And, and they said that in, in right. the webinar things, right. like even though you dedicated to use it for anything, try to use it for one. So yeah, and that's kind of why I wanted to use it for the building, but oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As much as we want to get it done tomorrow, that may not work for a year or two. Well, let's so that my concern is if we use the, the ARP money for it rather than like some of the money out of liquid fuels, we'll have it's not necessarily a problem, we'll have money in liquid fuels that we can do other stuff with, right. but then we won't have money to put towards uh, but the other. Kind of it is it is yeah. it is but it isn't right. um so let's let's ponder that because okay. like that's let's see how fast we can do stuff with the building because okay. i think and jim i i think you're probably of like mind that we're 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 sitting on a landmine right now yeah so yeah and you, i know you did some homework on the building too so let's let's circle back to that in a second yeah do out of the general fund because that that will help distribute the costs the okay. right way across the funds that we have okay. money in. And if you guys pick up like stuff, just make sure you submit a detailed receipt to us. That's all. Yeah. Okay. And right, maybe write on it to what it's for. Because sometimes it's I'm not. Sure. I'm usually yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like look at it. Yeah. It's like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you guys know it is, but we don't. Yeah, and say so just write write it on the margin, like Marion Colbert, Riker Colbert, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We it'd be specific as to which Colbert it's for, yeah. because then again I could detail. Yeah. Stuff. 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 Stuff and things. Road work. You know, like if it's something miscellaneous, like just like which Colbert you're gonna use it for, and that's that. Yeah. So. Okay, moving on to the next thing, the fuel for the culvert projects. Uh, Ryan would like to use Drescher fuel. Uh, they're going to deliver to the, the work site. I don't have any problem with this. I don't even know that we need a motion necessarily, but I was going to say I'll, I'll make a motion just to be just to be safe. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve getting fuel for the culvert project from Drescher fuel. Second. Honorable call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. I mean, aye. Okay, next is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, the secretary has called uh, several companies to inspect, televise, and clean out. We received quotes from Klein Services and Ditch Creek Utility Services, uh, both of which were really expensive. Um, oh, it, it, was, it, was, it was expensive. So I think what might be best would be rather than trying to immediately get it televised, let's see if we can just get somebody out to flush it and see if we can actually get water moving through it. And if we can't, then we know we have. Hmm. 
อืมเนี่ย honestly the cost of the the cleaning and televising it, it probably would be cheaper just to put it in two pot <laughs> yeah it was like a couple thousand dollars we have some pipe yeah Well, let's let's measure it. If we have something, let's use it. But I'm I'm kind of thinking based on and just for everybody's understanding on this, the the cost of the clean out and the televising was multiple thousands of dollars. That it's it's cheaper, it's cheaper just to have Butch dig it up and put a new one in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. down there in Maine but I don't think they ever finished it Okay. so I think they put the pipe in and then covered it with asphalt you know because yeah. they were going to redo the asphalt yeah. so why not put the pipe in yeah. so <laughs> that's, that's even better so Butch What I'd like you to do is measure that pipe that we have out there, see if it would work, and then based on that, I'm I'm actually okay. And let's let's make a motion on it. Um, I'm okay with you moving forward, doing like the PA one call and anything else that you have to do, and excavating. Like we'll we'll figure out, we'll mark, we'll put signs up for road closed, whatever. Um, but based on that, I think it's going to be infinitely less costly for us to do exploratory surgery than it is to have somebody televise the pipe and try and clean it out. <laughs> So um, I'll make a motion to have Butch move forward with the preliminaries of measuring and uh, proposing road closures for uh, Marion Drive, that, that pipe at the end of Marion Drive. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Comcast franchise renewal. Um, as of the last update that I had gotten, we have not seen back from Cohen Law Group yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, let me get my March schedule. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, let's... Wait. Part of this problem is coming in during the day. I like to be here during the day because we get a lot of problems fixed. Yeah. yeah. That computer has... I, I know. I know. I, I was actually... Day. I was talking to Dan about yeah. it. I was going to do yeah. it the past couple of weeks, but I... have been sick. And yeah. Sick, so. Yeah. So, and, and being able to communicate between the computers, too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I always displace Linda. It's always like, okay, please, like you could leave at this time. It just there's so much more that gets done when we're all in here versus. Yeah. Like, no, un yeah, understood. Yeah. And that one, that one's on me. Yeah. I need to, I need to finish that one. I just I have okay. not had the opportunity. Um, and I was talking to Dan Klein the other day that he's volunteered to help me come in and pull the rest of the stuff. He's in tight. Um, one of these nights that way we can move all of the equipment mm -hmm. over because it's. It's it's simple on its surface, but I need to move like the router and the modem and everything over there, and then I need to make sure everything is terminated correctly. And okay. then it's it's it, there's there's a there's a whole yeah. song and dance to it. Yeah. Um, so one of these nights or a couple of these nights, we'll come in, we'll pull some wire, I'll do the preliminary terminations, and then I'll actually do the cutover, um, which would give us uh, instead of having the Wi-Fi being broadcast from that far corner. Would be broadcast from the center of the building which means you'd have even coverage both in the office and over there as well as also having a physical plugged-in network connection in each one of the spaces i have an easier room for you while butch is here today can you show him where you want those signs yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can i can take a walk take with some, butch take some orange paint yeah for a big square yeah we can yeah. we can do that right after yeah. the meeting yeah. Because all the information is there, I can access anything on the mm -hmm. books, and the desks are in the other auditors. Could have used it instead. It was just like back and forth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I know, and I for, for what it's worth, yeah. I apologize on that. Um, we'll uh, we'll get it. It's just going to be probably sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay. That, like, so we okay. come in and do that. But marking the stuff, I can take a walk with Butch right after the meeting. 
Um, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendment. This is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we have been not we have not been notified when the Western Berks Joint Zoning will be scheduled. Okay. The next couple of years. Yeah. Um, she has inverted. Okay. Through the municipality. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. What was the reasoning for involving us into this joint thing that so takes forever to there's, accomplish? We there's, could have just been done with this. It's it's yeah. there's lots of benefits to being involved in the joint stuff. Um, one of the simple ones is if you have nothing stated in zoning, like let's say I'm going to use an extreme example here. You don't have anything that allocates spots that you can put in like a strip club. If your zoning doesn't specifically say that you can't do it, it's implicitly allowed. Whereas when you're in a joint thing and you don't have it specifically in your zoning, as long as one of the other areas has it that you can say, we don't have it in our zoning. If you wanted to do this sort of thing, you'd have to go to whatever other municipality is involved in this because they have a spot zone for this. So you're you're still able to self-govern. It takes a little longer to move through the process for updates, but you're able to leverage each other's zoning for, for the betterment of the, the group. Um, you also see a reduction in costs when you're trying to do things like when we did the solar panel thing. That was a, a shared cost across all of the municipalities that are involved in the joint zoning rather than each one having to pay uh, the legal aspect of it for somebody to draw up the ordinance, uh, to have it advertised, to have it adopted. It's it's um it's a bit of a pain, but there is a lot of utility for doing it as a group. Well, it's a bit of a pain. Yeah. We've been fooling around with this now for almost a year. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I want to say we were probably six or six or seven months. It's been a it's long been time. A it's been a while, but it's been a while. Um, certain certain things people have a a hot button for, like the the solar panel thing moved pretty quick. But depending on how the other municipalities prioritize this, this might not be a, a big thing for them. They just may not have voted on it yet. So is this so. how they threw the tattoo guy on 422? What was that? Put in, it was a tattoo shop on 422 in Wilmerstorf. Yeah. They threw him out, and now there's a carpet. Uh, carpet I in. don't know if that, that was... Pulled that off? I don't know if that was zoning related. Was that I don't zoning? know how that happened. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know the back. How you how you can tell one business you can't be in here, but well, you can tell another business. You can't. Typ typically, it's before the business goes in because when they're when they're. Not oh, that I'm a big on tattoos. So yeah, I have none, but I just wondered if that's how they. Think. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know. But for example, this is like where if somebody somebody wanted to buy a building and they filed with us for like, hey, we're going to be opening a business here, it would go and yeah. we would say it doesn't work with yeah. our zoning. You're not allowed to put that's like. Funny. You, you can't put a, a factory in on 422 because it's not zoned industrial. Um, that sort of thing is where that that mechanism brings it in. And it's, like I said, usually well before somebody actually moves into a space. Um, well, it'd be nice if they'd have their meeting so we could. Oh, agreed. Get complete, completely agreed. But it's, it's going to move at the speed that it's moving. But for the time being, we're just going to, uh, based on the board's assessment of this, we're not going to be enforcing the that section yeah. of the zoning based on our amendment that we, we have pending okay okay uh next is the building property renovations i won't dwell too much on this uh we had a specialty contractor out from the whitmer group from mount joy back on the 17th of january to evaluate the brick wall above the garage that is bowing out um did we get his report back or no okay so I think basically the consensus is they want to band-aid it. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to pump a huge amount of money yeah. into that if we're planning on no. moving. Yeah, that yellow tape is more <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Duct, duct tape may not cut it, Jim. Um, I don't want to put the yellow tape, uh, the one that goes across the door and move all the equipment out and yeah. it falls, it falls. And if that, if that, that wall falls, we have to basically abandon ship. Let's see um, where. Maybe, maybe that's what it's eventually going to take. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, 
here. That's unfortunate. <laughs> the situation that we're in, this is not a good thing. Yeah. You know? So I just hate looking. He also had a twenty thousand dollars to repair it. Yeah. So looking at the Whitmer, I mean, the looking at the Whitmer group, band-aids. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's twenty five thousand dollars as a band aid, but to actually fix it would be, uh, yeah, basically just shy of ninety because it's an additional sixty eight thousand. Maybe it might be more because once you, start, once you start peeling that back, you're going to find more stuff yeah, that's wrong, yeah. guaranteed. How much would it cost to put a pole boot? Yeah, that's, that's twenty five thousand. No, forty thousand. Yeah, it's it's more. Fifty thousand. Yeah, but. But I, I don't know that we want to put good money after bad, right. to put it bluntly. Right, right. So, so, so the, and then that leads us to number 12. Yes, the which is, yeah. so um, depending on what and how we can do things. So I, uh, Chuck uh, sent us some building designs for a new township building, looked at uh, um, Peter's drawings. So, um, and just update, Jim got us a realtor to come through here. Her impression was this building really probably would not sell. So I, I created a building project outline, just something I want everyone's feedback. We're gonna we're gonna detail this a little bit more so that we have a format to follow. So some concepts that we're, we were we were tossing around, and again, I want to detail it. We'd like to definitely maintain the alumni history room, a large meeting space that possibly is divisible uh, area for events, a kitchenette, a hazmat shower, and to bring us into the 21st century at key fob entry. A closed vestibule for public access slash bulletproof glass, because unfortunately violence is part of how we live with things daily. Um, and so that we would be able to restrict people coming in and there's an access point to um, provide people with information um, like the permit stuff, et cetera, but that still would protect anyone working in the building. Um, if, if it, I don't know, is anyone, well, Conrad Weiser School District, I hadn't been over to the high school in, I don't know, a year or so. Oh my God, their entry point was was unreal. So if anyone has an opportunity or they just want to come with me, I want you to like look at the high school entry point. It was very mm -hmm. interesting over what they did. And they did it for, for safety. We'd need some type of an access draw like you do like at the bank when you do the drive up this way. Again, it's kind of hands off. If we encounter another pandemic like we did, we wouldn't have to shut down because we wouldn't have the direct person's person access. There'd be an access draw. You put your items in the draw. There's the feedback, and you can still communicate with the public. Again, it would be, it would be almost like a, a bank drive-through. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So again, just this forward thinking over future use of the building sprinkler system. We just got fire extinguishers here. Yeah. Which that was just bad. Um, a, automatic lights, which help save on uh, electricity costs. You walk into the room, they're triggered, and then they go off when it, after a certain time. Electric versus gas on the building, um, and that's, that's a different I, concept. I actually would suggest looking at, rather than going straight electric, Yeah. because you're going to spend a lot more in electrical costs, right. having something that's a hybrid system, like looking down further with the solar right. panels. Right. If you had something that was predominantly a heat pump, take up the, the easy right. part of it and then still use gas. Gas is a much better um, mechanism for heating than electricity right. is. So again, like there's 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 so many options over uh, green buildings mm. now. So that's something to look into. We would explore what we need for an evacuation center. And actually, I think with having the uh, hazmat shower, the kitchenette um, and the larger component for a larger meeting room, and of course, bathroom needs, we might be able to satisfy that. Mm -hmm. um, we could also serve, and again, something that people don't really think about, we could also serve as a cooling or a heating center in times of crisis. Again, some of our neighbors don't have air conditioning. So we're getting hotter and hotter summers and having the facility open that where they could come during the hot points of the day where they could literally survive. Um, that's another concept to think mm -hmm. about. Again, and if we, Go forward with these kind of concepts. We again, we might be open to more grant and funding with that. Uh, obviously, we need updated computer networking and safety needs, and anticipating future needs such as extra office space, like a police substation, the temporary space for the tax collector to use, or the emergency management coordinator. Um, when talking about exterior concepts, single story. I don't know about you guys. I hate going up and like down the stairs. Single story because um, then you get into stuff with you either need like a chairlift or right, an elevator right, or right. a ramp. Or we just don't want just, to have to deal with that. We just don't touch it. Um, solar power, generator backup, 
uh, different uh, entry points for public versus staff. Again, safety issue, huge safety issue here. And then uh, just something I thought about when kid, people don't know they could come and essentially use the bathroom here when they're at the park. I'd like that. I'd like people to say, because I remember when I was, uh, uh, um, when my kids were small, it was nice to have a place to where you could take your kids to the bathroom when you're at the park. Well, so, I, I agree. I can't tell yeah. you a number of times right. I've taken my kids to the right. park and, they're, and then they're like, I need to pee. Uh, something I don't know if we really thought about too much is the needs for the garage. Mm. Um, do we want to have a separate building versus separate, attached? Separate building right. for insurance reasons. I, 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 I like that concept too. Now, we're, we're still having a lot of conversation about this site versus another site, but something else I thought about the other day, do we necessarily have to have our garage and our salt shed on this property? We could probably find a smaller property and just have that building there with the salt shed and basically it's our public works location where you could have um, three to four double bays. You have the bathroom there, you have a shower there, you have a computer for whatever needs that they have log in, clock in, clock out, all yeah. that stuff. And it's it's essentially still township property, but now we can use more space on this just for the building. Yeah, the only, yeah. the only real detriment that I can think of for that is you would have a second set of like the you'd have to have a well right. dug rather right. than leveraging the well that's on right. on the existing property same thing with the sewage right. whether it's a septic system or the public sewer connection you have to have right. double right. up on the infrastructure right. but 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 i think again like thinking down the road the needs that we have here this building is so inadequate and just looking at the physical space here you know if this was a meeting room three times the size of this we've we've taken up all the ground space here mm -hmm. so again like like thinking of you know do we rebuild here but have the garage and the salt shed on a different location so that's something i just i thought about the other day i said why don't we, we we do that or even explore that concept well, let's keep it in the mix yeah. as an option for sure yeah uh, the salt shed we know we need we need bigger space that's been an issue year after year after year mm -hmm. uh, and then of course um building versus demolishing so we don't know if this building would sell until and unless we would market it as a sale um the cost of demolition again that's another big mm -hmm. problem here to is it too cost prohibitive because of there's going to be asbestos in here there's going to be lead paint in here mm -hmm. and so what would happen if we just say okay we can't sell we we, we can't demo are we going to uh, literally abandon ship now it becomes a property mm -hmm. And so at some point, someone may buy it because they would have enough money to deal with the, all those issues. But basically, the property is so devalued, they would be buying it for nothing, essentially. And and then we have an abandoned property. We have a blank problem that we've created. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no. So, so, so th these. This, this is just the outline, and these are some of the things that I'm going to be working on and getting, you know, reaching out to people and and getting multiple quotes. I think the build, the building design is something we're going to have to all put a lot of. Yeah. But, but this is doing. This is a lot of homework, and I'm just doing this as as an outline. Um, uh, and then I just kind of put the, some more information here. Like again, remaining on the current property to be considered moving the garage and the salt shed to another parcel. Um, uh, if we move just the building and we maintain the park here, we'd have to sub, uh, we'd have to split the deed, yeah. which is fine. And I actually, I talked yeah. to Colin about that after the meeting, since we are a governmental entity, we actually, I think are exempt from a lot of the requirements for that we essentially okay. would just draw up the a new deed a new deed with the new boundaries for each and file it i think okay. like we okay. don't have to go through any of the other stuff based on what he said okay. so so that's that's another thing so um we can harvest or salvage the building and this is something that we had talked about if we were to either rebuild on this site or um build on a new site we could take a lot of the components from this building and recreate a beautiful history room slash alumni room and really recreate what this building was about uh in, in certain components we could harvest a lot of these materials because um a lot of people love this old stuff the flooring the doors the wood the trim all that stuff could be harvested and sold off and that would increase some capital for us but it's again it's getting the right people in here and getting um, bids essentially over what they would pay us for these these items. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then again, like, like, what do we do if we can't sell and the, and the demo costs are just so high? It's just, are, are we going to be the cause of a blighted property? I mean, that's, again, like this big problem that was dumped in our laps because so many people didn't maintain the building. I don't care who you are, what you're from, that wall needs to be fixed. Whether it's a Band-Aid, whether it's a $25,000 repair or $100,000 repair, that needs to be fixed. It still doesn't address the other rehab problems within this building, which we know will be half a million dollars. It also doesn't right. address the, the functional usage no, problems no, that we no. have in the building, too. So, so rehab alone, including that wall, would be about $600,000 rehabilitating the building, mm -hmm. not improving the functionality, not addressing use at all. It doesn't make this room better. Or, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's insane. Um, and then again, like just going down the list of, of the things that we need to consider. This, it's there's, there's so much to this project. Temporary office, where and, and what size? That I think is easy enough. We need to store all the old documents, but going through that, we need to, uh, is that a resolution to? We'd have to destroy any old yeah, documents. Yeah, we'd have, have to, yeah. to, yes. we'd have yeah. to pass resolutions. We would need to go through every single box that's in this you building. Also, you also need temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, so, and that, so and that, that could be yeah. something that we arrange yeah. like with a church or something. Yeah. 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 But I am. I'm doing that right now. And that's something uh, we could probably even talk to the school and see if they would house us there, fire department, et cetera, see if there's the capacity. Um, and then where do we put the equipment? Where do we put the salt? Where do we put all of our things that we have to do? So, um, and then last but not least, of course, funding grants and loans. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I just created the outline. If you guys please feel free to help me out. I'm going to post it on the supervisor's board that we have in the AA room. And I'm going to expand. I'm going to start making phone calls and getting more information. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got to run several things in in parallel the first one is since we've already talked to a real estate agent and the prospect of sale is not super high we need to continue to look at available parcels maybe talk to richard hassler and see if that would be i left a message i stopped yeah. and left a message for yeah. mr hassler and he has some coffee yeah so empire was here last week or week before uh we haven't got an estimate back on demo yet but uh and then i also called uh I forget the gentleman's name but he hasn't been here yet either. Yeah, I'll okay. create a new <laughs> But I, I personally think it's it's just a matter of what's it going to cost for a new parcel versus what's it going to cost, cost to take right. this right. one down. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, let's if it's say, significantly different. Right. And let's say we were able to sense. get a smaller new parcel. We could say, okay, we were able to purchase this. We're able to put the salt chip and, and the garage essentially on that. Mm -hmm. Then that would physically serve as a, a place where we could store some of the items from here. Yeah. So we could do that part of the project first and then the building. And of course, last but not least, the park would have to be redesigned. Mm -hmm. We would we would put money into it for ADA access, um, yeah. fix all the problems with the ball field, et the, cetera. Um, so. The MTCA actually already has a very nice plan that McCarthy Engineering had donated to yeah. them. So we actually have a lot of the planning component of that right. done. It would just be the, the funding yep. component yep. of it when we yep. go to do the project. And I think that would be, you know, again, mm -hmm. trying try to anticipate future needs of, of this community, but this place is falling down and one day it will fall down and, and there's, there's nothing we could do. I, I would hate to know what it would cost. It would cost millions of dollars to, to actually rehab this, to make this into a nice yeah. building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the real estate agents, her her thought was, you could use this for apartments, but you can't because there's no sewage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you, somebody could buy it for an office building, but then they'd have to put in an elevator, and that's not likely to happen. Yep. And so her thought was, and then if you found another piece of property and you still can't sell this, you just said it. What happens to this building? Right. Yep. You'd probably still have to tear it. So now you're going to have the cost of a new piece this of property, property and, and the cost of tearing this down. And then you might be able to sell it. Yeah. But can you even sell it for what it costs to tear it down? No. And the no. answer to that question from her was probably not. It's, it would be a, you could get money for it, but it would, it, would it offset no. what you paid for it? So you're still giving it away. Yeah. So I think one, so, one of the avenues that we should explore is 
oh. if the, the property next door yeah. becomes available or if it's a situation where it goes up for sale and oh. it's an eminent domain sort of thing. Um, seeing how much more that extra, because it's only like a three quarters of an acre, how much extra space that yeah. gives us to be able to fit stuff on the existing parcel. Um, because while I don't relish the idea of carrying the building down, if we do, we can do certain things to preserve the charm. We right. can take the woodwork, we can yeah, take the lights, we can take the floor, um, so that it, it still has the character of the building. Because yeah. like we don't, I don't think anybody anywhere really has the, the kind of money that you would have to dump into this to get it back to good, yeah. let alone get it to a point where it's, it's functional in the ways yeah. that we need it to be functional. Yeah. I mean, we the have, thing with buying yeah. this house next door is yeah. that could be used temporarily as an office. As an office, yeah. yeah. Until it, we're ready. Yeah. And you just said if we can change the properties mm -hmm. around a little bit, we could we could take a little bit of that piece mm -hmm. and add it to building here. And when it's all said and done, that building, that, that house is still going to be worth what we paid for it, if not more. So but you can I, just resell it if you want to. I, I would think you'd almost have to knock it down and use yeah. the, well, the, that was the, my original the floor space. Business, but, but if you're worried about money, you could yeah. probably resell it too. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so they were asking questions over, you know, what is going on in the community with development, building this and that. I said, well, we have a lot of restrictions, so not much at this point. I said, but. We are looking at uh, possibly building a municipal building. He goes, we can help you with that. So on March 14th, there's a meeting at Osgoods and uh, there's a, a couple, I think Robbie is invited and I think Wilson also. So again, I'm waiting for my schedule to come out. So we plan on, on a meeting with them. Um, he said, yeah, there might be money and help, especially. Let me, money. let me know the details yeah. about it. If I can, oh, if I can take off of work that day or that morning, I'll, I'll be yeah. in attendance too. It's, it's, it's in the, oh, that's, that's even yeah. easier though. Yeah. 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 So 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 that might that might yeah. be an area. Or it could be the usual yeah. but, 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 you gotta try. Right. But, right. With with ten yeah. So, March 14th is the So, yeah. So, with, with, with all these things that we're looking at, like essentially like a green building, community center, it would be the Marion Township Community Center and Marion Township offices. Yeah. With, with, with doing all this stuff, with speaking with a couple of people that do grant writing, the more, the more things we push into it, the better. The better. And if we're this, uh, like a new concept type of a building, where it's green energy, blah, 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 anything you could think of, um, we might be able to get more funding and we could be like... <laughs> we could actually be ahead. We, we could be ahead of the game rather than behind it. Um, you know, something that's, something that's essentially new instead of just recreating the old just to get something different from here on and, and forward as, mm -hmm. as a functionality and service to the community. And so that's, I guess maybe that's the angle I'm going to try to push. You know, talking to the senators, talking to, to congressmen, talking to anyone and everyone will say, hey, yeah, I'll help you out with that. So, yeah. It, 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 it is working side uh, in this building, short of cheap number. Oh yeah. No, no, no. We we will get multiple quotes. The, the problem is it's doing it safely and efficiently because we know that there's going to be problems. When was there's, the building built in the 1860s? 1877. 1877. Yeah. There's guaranteed like there's there's there's, there's lead paint, yeah. there's asbestos. Yeah. Um, so, if we have to do anything with that tank that's buried out there as part of the demolition, like right. God help us if it's if it's leaked any time in over the past decades that it's been in there, but.
Well, so that's that's the thing. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can't. So when you when you ask for I don't want to say ask for permission, but when you file whatever you have to file about decommissioning the tank with the state, they may say no. You need to dig it out. And if they say no, you need to dig it out. Then we're potentially in yeah. a, a world of hurt. Yeah. But you got to. You got to do what you got to do. But. Gosh, it mm -hmm. was just wasn't stuff in in the in the garbage we had to properly remove that seven thousand dollars later, later yeah all these problems that have been dumped into our laps they're expensive and i'm sorry but had people taken care of things the way they should have none of this would have happened it's, it's unfortunately it's time yeah. to pay the piper Yeah, yeah. It went from it's, to seven it's still expensive <laughs> it still hurt yeah right that check. yeah yeah Okay, so I think we're, there's going to be a lot more discussion right, on that, right. but but we need to we need to assess the options. Yeah, yeah. we'll look at the the outline. We need to see about getting quotes for if we were to demolish, and then right. compare that directly to okay, if we let's say we spend a hundred thousand dollars on a, a parcel of land, and it's going to be another five hundred thousand dollars to build a pole building, and it's going to be this and this and this. Does it actually make sense? Like, is the cost of demolition going to be? at or less than what it would cost to buy new property because again right. we have to we have to divorce ourselves right. from sentimentality right. in, in this sort of decision right. if, if, if the answer ship and no one's going to buy this what happens to this property it's still oh no, yeah 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 that's that's certainly still a risk a location, got we have two locations right. to, to take care of yeah no so I, I i agree with you but again we just have to weigh that right. into Cost. into the the cost aspect yeah. of that as a risk like what's the actual risk of us not being able to do anything even yeah. if it was we gave it away what would <laughs> what what would be the actual impact yeah. of that yeah so well, lots well, more to be done on that questions, I'm gonna start with phone calls and yeah. staying on top of this. yeah the the information is really yeah. the, the first bit of it knowing knowing is yeah. half the battle yeah. so are, are you ladies okay <laughs> if i have people Until 2 p.m. So not during meeting. Not during meeting. Okay. 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 Next up, we'll move to the next item, which is also about this particular agenda item, is the property deed. As we mentioned before, the Conrad Weiser Superintendent and Director of Facilities was here. They did a walkthrough with us. The school board discussed it, and they are willing to lift the two covenants on the current deed. Our solicitor is preparing a contract and a new deed for the school board's consideration. Andy has drawn up the agreement and the deed already. So once they review it, we can. So, ah, okay. Good. School board signed it. We have Perfect. We then need a motion to sign. I will make a motion to sign the agreement and deed. Second. It's excellent. That's the least. On a roll call, call Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. That's the easiest part of all. I was going to say that was the simplest thing we've had to do all year. Okay. I will sign that. And then, Sue, you're going to have to sign it too, right? Okay. Uh, next is. Yeah. Be responsible to have it reported. Okay. So that's going to be cost. I don't know how much. Well, let's let's put it on Thursday night's agenda. That way we don't have to amend yeah. the okay. the agenda again. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm all for just making a motion and making it proper. Um, next is the CoStar Salt contract renewal. The enrollment deadline is March the 15th, so we'll need to make a decision Thursday night on this for the 2023-2024 season. So uh, we still have to take two or three. Yeah, because ton got two, so it's like twenty six. Oh. That we got forty six tons so far. I mean forty six. Yeah, so we would need another two loads yeah. to hit the ninety. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Butch, can you? <laughs> can we? Can we reach out to Tulpa Hawken? and see if they if if we don't get any snow fingers crossed we don't if we don't get any snow if they would be willing to babysit the salt like they did the last year 
Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to have an agreement, but just give them a phone call and see if they'd be willing to do that because they may not have the space either. So, yeah. <clears throat> And then for Thursday night, we're going to need to decide how much salt. I still think the 200 or, or the 150, yeah. thank you, 150 yeah. is is the way to go. Because then if we have a, a mild year, we can very easily go through 90 tons of salt. Uh, but if we have a more inclement year, we can go up to like 210 or 220 or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll be in good spaces there if we have a, a pretty heavy year as well. Um, Okay, next is the Mar uh, Marion Township Community Association Car Show. The Community Association would like to hold the car show on May 20th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we will need to authorize this, review and approve the traffic control, and um, ask the police and fire companies for availability and volunteerism. So I have letters from previous years. I just have to change the dates on. It's the same thing we sent out before. Um, Irene, I'd like to since John has a pretty good relationship with a lot of fire companies, leverage John as well, supply the letter to him. Sure, yeah. um, okay. And then Sue, I'd like to send that out to the uh, all the neighboring municipalities like we've done in the past, the actual like board of supervisors asking for them to authorize the fire companies to, to do it. Um, and I actually have it up. Let me share, let me share my screen. So if everybody wants to turn slightly, the this is the same traffic flow that they've used in previous years where traffic would be moving from east to west up Main Street. We would be using the municipal parking lot and the ball field as parking. Uh, the main car show is here in kind of lavender color. We would have the alleys closed as well as the ingress from 422 closed. Traffic would then move out either to 422 or if there's nothing parked on this stretch of Main Street for the car show, just straight westward. So all the traffic would be moving from east to west, uh, both for entering the car show if you're a participant or if you're a spectator, everything would, would go kind of right to left on this diagram. Um, we would have to put up a couple of do not enter and road close signs to make sure that people don't come this way. Same thing with Richland Road. And we should probably, based on some of the, the complaining that we've got in previous years, uh, put some signs up in advance. That way people that are trying to get to the Rod and Gun Club uh, know to take that one simple detour down Richland Road rather than trying to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. Um, so like I said, this, is, this has been the plan the past couple of times that the community association has done this. I don't see any major needs for revision. Uh, do either of you have any concerns or comments on that? Okay, I'll make uh, the first of several motions. Uh, I'll motion to approve the proposed uh, traffic design for the car show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it out. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is we just put up some signage. Like, I mean, we, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, yeah, I mean, just yeah, we put up the no parking signs a couple of weeks in advance. And then, like, if we have any signs like car show May 20th or something, try to cover bases. I'll put a thing on the website for anybody that looks at the website. Um, but yeah, it's, Yeah. Okay. Um, I, as I say, I had put a motion on the table for approving the traffic diagram. Second. 
On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, next is the actual approving of road closures for the traffic design on May the 20th from, I'm going to say 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Give a little buffer on either direction. You have, you have 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. here, so I figured give a little time in the beginning for setup and a little bit of time for breakdown at the end. 8 a.m.? Okay, uh, so... Did we do seven past? Okay. Okay. So do me a favor, Linda. Amend amend my motion that I'm making to be 7 a.m. to 3 30. Okay. Well, apologies. So we're we're discussing. <laughs> so do you guys think we need more time there? 7 a.m. to 3 3 30? Yeah. Because I mean setup takes you don't I mean, do you, do you want four, seven to four? Yeah, I, I know when we did that, like the first year, we had everything broken down fast. Like setup took a while, but breakdown took not a huge amount of time whatsoever. Like I think everybody was very, very enthusiastic about getting home. Yeah. This is true. This is true. So you am going to do seven to five. Yeah, and we just have to make sure because, like, technically, if the road is closed and people start parking there again, the police could be giving tickets. We just have to let the Tulpahawken police know that, like, if if the if the car show is finished, don't start ticketing people. Um, yeah, so I'll make the motion officially to uh, close the streets per the traffic design for May twentieth from seven a.m. until five p.m. Sure. Roll call, Aye. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, that means we will put up, and actually I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, um, street sweeping. Okay, um, I'm going to bounce forward one to the street sweeping so we can talk about that, uh, because I want to make the, the motions for the signs for no parking all at once. Uh, yeah, so street sweeping uh, will occur on Main Street from Richland Road to Sheridan Bridge, Palatine Place, Church and Main to 422, uh, the engine house parking lot, municipal building parking lot, and in front of the swings. Uh, we should do it before the car show and not on a Tuesday, not on a trash day. Um, so we should pick a date and a rain date. So I would say if we're looking at... Certainly. So the roads for street sweeping are on Main Street, from Richland Road to the Sheridan uh, Bridge, Palatine Place, Church, and Main. Yeah. Um, uh, engine House parking lot, Municipal Building parking lot, and over there in front of the swings. But but I I, I kind of understand Kelly's question of why do we do yeah yeah so yeah so I honestly I don't think we really need to do Palatine Place but yeah what are your, your what are your two thoughts on it yeah yeah so I would say let's take off Palatine Place I know we've done that historically in the past but I'll, I'll be honest I don't think it needs it like. I agree with your point, Kelly, that what's the difference between Idris Road or Talpy View or the end of Shady Cabin Circle versus that? We're, we're trying to cover main thoroughfares. So, um, so in terms of looking at dates, if we don't want the Tuesday, which would be the 15th, or excuse me, the 16th, and that's election day, so we don't want to do that anyway. So we would want to either do it the 17th, 18th, or 19th. Okay, so week before would be the 10th, 11th, or 12th. Do we want to, I mean, based on the street sweeping company's availability, do we want to ask for like the 10th with a rain date of the 11th or an 11th with a rain date of the 12th as the two options? 
Well, that's what I mean. Like, let's, so let's let's ask for the tenth and the eleventh. But if they don't have that, let's go with the tenth or the eleventh or the twelfth. No, no that's right. it. Yeah. Um, and then when when we're doing that, and I'll make a motion for all this in just a second, we're going to take Palatine Place off of the the street sweeping. So I'll make a motion to uh, tentatively schedule the street sweeping of Main Street from Richland Road to Sheridan at the bridge, Church and Main to 422, the engine house parking lot, municipal building parking lot, and in front of the swings for Wednesday, May 10th with a rain date of the 11th, or Thursday, May 11th, and Friday, May 12th. So, on a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay. And the next motion on this is to place the uh, upcoming road, clo or not road close, the no parking, excuse me, no parking signage for the street sweeping and the car show during the week of May the 1st. Second. Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Okay, final item on the agenda is the community association's request for the storage trailer. Uh, Lee did provide pictures. It's actually a very nice looking trailer. Um, personally, I'm inclined to allow it as long as we have a couple of stipulations in place around recording an, an inventory of what is kept in the trailer for theft or damage purposes, and that it is kept up to a presentable standard, and that it is maintained in a safe, and responsible way. Uh, one thing would be, since they're keeping the wheels on when they drive it in, uh, properly obstructing the underside of the trailer so that we don't have uh, kids crawling under there or, or animals taking up residence under there. Thing, basic things like that. Um, Jim, I know you've gotten to see the pictures, Irene. I don't know if you've gotten yeah. to see them either. Um, Jim, do you have them? Do you have them on your phone? Could you show Irene? Uh, Lee, do you have do you have a picture with you? I thought he texted it to you. Yes, yeah, so I think you and I texted it to Jim at the end of that meeting. So we'll give, give Lee a second see if you can find it. But it's a it's a rather nice looking trailer. It's mostly like stainless steel and aluminum. Yeah. And there's like no rust on it whatsoever. So it could be very easily painted up real nice with like a nice mural and would give them plenty of so thank you. So I'll I'll make a motion to authorize the MTCA to move forward with the uh, acquiring and placement of the trailer. Six. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Are we? No. Okay, and Jim? Yes. Okay. That concludes the main agenda items. Uh, the only thing I have for comment is uh, I am going to put a sticky up on the website, just a, a long-term thing that we're, we're looking for road crew that are interested in plowing snow during the winter that preferably have a CDL. I know we had advertised previously and we got a couple of bites, but nobody wanted to based on the, the wages. Um, we'll just put it out there. I had a conversation with Kelly about this the one day and see if we get any, any interested people that happen to cross paths with the website and see if we can get volunteerism that way or semi-volunteerism because it is paid. Um, other than that, that's all I had. Irene, do you have any comments? Just the FYI, I was able to get a reprint of an article from the Reading uh, Eagle about how Marion Township got its name. So it's hanging up there. Mm. It's just kind of cool. cute. So, yeah, I'll have to, I, I noticed that. I'll have to read yeah. it. Yeah, um, I thought it was cool. Uh, circling back to the, the would you guys just approve the trailer? I continue to have a contract in place with the MTCA needs to be very specific and it needs to be approved and renewed annually okay. because I think there's going to be a problem with what items are stored there. I am concerned about safety issues. 
So I would suggest that you probably ask Andy to draw up some type of a contract over maintenance, routine checks on it, make sure the wheels are intact, there's nothing underneath, debris, et cetera, mm -hmm. any kind of other materials that might accumulate around it as far as hazardous um, kind of thing with any people, children, et cetera. So theft of property, et cetera. So you need something very comprehensive over this item that's potentially movable. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that, that's my only concern about that. That's that's yeah. fine. We can yeah. we can talk to the the solicitor on Thursday night. I think that's yeah. going to be a pretty basic agreement in terms of what we've already kind of yeah. discussed. If and when people at the community association there's a turnover and who is mm. running the show, that someone has title to that um, item mm. as well as the contents of it, because unfortunately we've had things in the building and we don't know who owns it and mm. what do we do, etc. So that if it's clear over who owns it, who's in charge of it, and who's responsible for maintenance, uh, I think that that's an issue. So um, the only other thing I want to say thank you tremendously to Sue for everything she does every day and helping me get through the audit. And we're hoping to get some feedback shortly. Um, yeah, it, 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 it is, but it isn't. It seems like every year they just ask for a little bit more. Yeah. And I felt like I was in good shape going into this year, but then they're asking me other questions. Well, that's that's the burden of success, though. Every year that you do well, you, the bar goes up a little bit. So, so we're waiting for the feedback. I'm hoping, again, it's just some minor clerical things. Um, but uh, it, it, they keep us on our toes, and, and I'm very grateful for contracting with Aikens. I, I think they're, they're pretty amazing, and I can't thank Sue enough for everything she does all the time to okay. keep this place going, and, and I don't know what I'd do without her, so... Yeah, yeah I, I echo that sentiment. We are really thankful yeah. to have you, Sue. There's tons of times. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim, do you have any comments? Uh, okay, Sue. Okay, Linda. Nope. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Time is now 10.41 a.m. Second. Aye. Uh, Irene? Aye. And Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Have a good long weekend, everybody.